Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. This is a Williams Aztec pinball machine that a customer has brought us and wants us to service. Uh, we messed around with it a little bit in a video before this already and figured out at the end of the video that the thing still works. Amazingly. Um, it's limping along, but it is still working. So uh, I figured, uh, you know, we still need to go through everything just to make sure it's all reliable and everything. But um, it's a good head start, I guess, whenever the thing is already playable. So if you didn't see that, go back and check it out. But we'll get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the play field so that we can work down on the bottom of it. And there's a whole bunch of stuff to do in the uh, the coffin, the cabin of the cabin, uh, the cabinet <laughs> of the game, uh, just to make it more reliable. I'm sure we'll run into all kinds of stuff that's broke or needs adjusted or whatever. And I know the chime box is ridiculous. So we'll see what we can run into. So unplug that. We looked over this in the previous video. Everything looks pretty good with the exception of the chimes. They look pretty bad. But they're very fixable. So I'm going to clean this up and vacuum it out. Uh, we'll start at the beginning, basically. <laughs> I guess starting at the plug is the beginning. We're still plugged in from before. Um, but uh, let me vacuum it up and get... Uh, what I usually do is everything that I want to keep, I throw in the coin box. And everything that's trash, I throw in the trash. Easy peasy. All right, so I got it all vacuumed up. That helps a lot just doing that. You can kind of see what you're working with. Uh, and then I went through and I cleaned all the switches on the relays and on the score motor. So basically, I use a little needle file and go between the, the switches. I didn't find one switch that looked like it was out of place or out of adjustment. Um, which makes sense because the thing is actually working. But I'm curious about these two stepper units. These things get gummed up all the time where they won't move at all. But... They don't really look that oxidized or anything, so I don't know if maybe somebody's worked through this at some point, or what the deal is. We did see some hackage. There was some hackage on the, one of the flippers, so somebody's worked on it at some point, obviously. Let's see if this thing will step up by hand. It sure will. Let's see if it'll reset. Not, as, not so much. So that should have slid all the way back. So if you go up one step, it works. Two steps, does not work. Three steps, does not work. Four steps, does not work. Okay, so that one's gummed up. That is the player, the, the coin unit. So that's what determines if you have a one-player game, two-player game, three-player game, or four-player game. This one is going to be... Hmm, I always get this confused. Which one is it? The ball count unit? Yeah, the ball count unit. That one seems to be working. Although it may not reset. Um, we played a game on it, played a five-ball game on it. And it stepped up just fine, and all the balls worked fine. But it may... Um, ooh, it reset great. So let's move it back through. Ball two. Reset. Ball three. It resets. Ball four. It resets. That one resets just fine. Very cool. So let's look at the switches on the other side. So on this ball count unit, see the bar there? <coughs> Excuse me. Whenever it gets in one direction, it should open that switch. So let's see what happens when I go this way. Okay, so now... The switch is closed. If you tap on it like that, you can see if this one moves before it hits that one. It doesn't, because they're already touching. But the one under it's a little harder to tell. I suppose it's connected. <laughs> 
So that one should open when it gets back to home position. I guess I should have stayed zoomed in. So it's open at home, open at zero, and then once you get off zero, it's closed. So that seems to be working fine. This one has a similar thing, but it actually works backwards. This one opens when you get to position four, because that the purpose of this switch is to keep you uh, from losing a quarter if you try to start a five-player game. So I think we reset it back to one. So it's on player one right now. And then we hit the start button again, and now it is a two-player game. We hit the start button again, now it is a three-player game, and it's taken three quarters. We hit the start button again, now it's a four-player game, and it's taken four quarters. The next time you hit start, it won't work because this switch is open. See how I, I can... I can move that one without it touching the other one. So uh, the switches are adjusted fine. The ball count unit is working great, but this uh, coin unit is kind of gummed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the... Um, I don't know if I'll take the spider all the way out. I'm going to take, take the spider off the other side, and we're going to clean the, uh, the, the, the Bakelite board there. Uh, put a little lubricant on it and put it all back together. I'm going to oil the shaft as it goes through the center. We're trying to get it where it'll spin better. All right, so here is the chime unit. It's really, it's seen better days. So I figured maybe we'd do a little bit of work on it, but I'm going to have to order a coil, it looks like. Um, all of the rubber grommets, of course, have disintegrated. That don't sound good. This middle one sounds all right. And the outside one doesn't sound good either. So if you listen, that rattle you hear, that's the problem. Now this one, you don't hear any metal rattle. That's how it's supposed to sound. And this one, it just, this one, it's not moving enough to like peel right. Basically, there's these little grommets that are supposed to go in there. And since they're 50 years old, they've disintegrated. And so if we put new ones, it will keep this from touching this plate. So since the metal is on the metal, that's the rattle you're hearing. This one's not doing it, so there must be something keeping it. Yeah, see how it's not touching the metal? It's what's left of the rubber grommet. It's just not completely gone on that one yet. And this one also has some of the rubber grommet left, which is why it doesn't rattle, but it doesn't sound good either. That one, that's all right. So that one's really bad. So you can see here that the coil has completely burnt up. Now, why would that happen? Um, if that's like the the one point or whatever, or on this one it, it has the five uh, score reels plus the dummy score reel. So that would have been 10 points. So the 10 point uh, coil is pulled in by the 10 point relay. So anytime you score 10 points, when the 10 point relay goes in, it pulses that. So if the 10 point relay gets stuck on, that will be stuck on. So what would stick the 10 point relay on? It could be a hanging score reel or it could be a switch stuck on the play field. Um, behind the rubber, uh, there's soot all over this obviously. Behind the rubber uh, rings on like the kickers and stuff, the, well not the kickers usually, but on some of the rebound switches I think they call them. Um, if the switch is stuck closed, which is really common, that will always be energized and it'll burn it up. So it's just a thing. I may have another one of those around here. It's a 226 1300. So whenever they do this, that number, the A2 is the type of spool that it's on basically. So how the mount is, just how it is. Sometimes it denotes the type of, of uh, 
of sleeve that's in it. So the sleeve on these is slightly different than the sleeve on some of the other ones because the uh, see how the sleeve hangs down below it. It's just a slightly different type of sleeve. So that A2 may actually denote that, right? Um, and then the 26 is the gauge of wire, and 1300 is how many are, are revolutions of that gauge of wire there are on this. So it's a 26 gauge wire wrapped around the spool 1300 times. And one end connects here, and one end connects here. And since it's an EM, there's no diode or anything because it's running on AC voltage. So, very cool. Alright, so I might have to disassemble it and then we'll have to, I'll dig around, see if I can find a coil or um, I'll order one. Look at this. We got this in the other day. This is a reproduction <laughs> uh, new wave vending, <laughs> uh, new wave toys classic 80s coke machine the thing plugs up it's a mini fridge so you can keep a uh, a cold beverage in it and it has these little mini cans that it dispenses if you put coins in it i don't want to touch it right now because it's getting dirt all over it so basically you put the coins in it and it lights up and you hit the whole front of it lights up and everything and you make one of your selections which are you know they're all the same and then the can comes out <laughs> That's absolutely ridiculous, but ridiculously cool. So if you're interested in one of these, uh, go check out New Wave Toys or uh, New Wave Vending. They do they do toys, which are like arcade games and stuff, but New Wave Vending is, you know, they're doing some vending products like this. Um, and it's all just a collectible, you know, it comes in a really nice box. We did an unboxing video of it before. You might want to check that out if you didn't see it. Uh, but yeah, let me work on these and uh, see if we can get them in a little bit better shape. Alright, so I tore it all down. I did have a replacement coil, so we're going to be good with that. I tore it all down and I cleaned this up the best I could. So this is the first part. This is the resonator. They make this little bucket just so that it'll reflect the tone and amplify it. So I wiped that down, got it pretty good. I'm going to leave this pad. These get this dent in it but this one's still pretty it's good um a lot of times this will be so screwed up that the the plunger will be hitting metal whenever it hits the bottom and so it makes a noise you hear it go thunk, thunk, after each uh after each chime um all right so we got that so we're going to start putting it back together so we're going to next up is the three coils and their they fit in there like that with these sleeves. Um, the one, I threw the one away already. The one that was in it was just burnt all to crap and this had melted. And what, what burns up a coil usually is it's just locked on. So once, once something locks it on where it can't release, it cooks because it's a dead short. You know? And once it gets hot enough, the, the uh, windings, the coating on the windings melts off in the middle and then it, you're done. Um, and so whenever it gets that hot, it's certainly hot enough to melt this nylon sleeve. So that will melt all in the inside, and you won't be able to get the plunger out. Okay, so let me uh, clean up the remaining two coils and put this one in and mount them back on here where they go. All right, so I got the top plate on, and you can see it's burnt a little bit from where that coil burn up. I got these soldered on, and the plunger was inside of it. So, uh, I mean, inside the cabinet, so I was able to find that. Also, one of these little plastic washers was missing, and I found it, so everything was there. Kind of. We'll talk about the little hold-down things at the end. But All right, so that's the, uh, the coils. Now, if we were to play it right now, uh, whenever it told the coil to excite, it would shoot the plunger right out of the top of it. <laughs> um and the thing would fall out on the bottom of the play field. I have actually done that before. Like I didn't have the bar on it or something. I just forgot about it. And I, I was test playing it. And I heard I heard a, a big thunk. And the, the thing shot out and fell on the bottom of the cabinet. No big deal, people. It falls right back in. Okay, so uh, these... Basically, the, the plate, the bar, has to be isolated from all of this metal. Right? So the way they did that 
was they had these little plastic sleeves and you can use whatever you want. I just re reuse these because they're still work workable, right? They had these things. And the, the, the reason for that is so that whenever the plate is on there, it doesn't actually hit metal on metal. They're trying to keep the metal isolated so that it has the ability to make that nice ding that we want to hear, you know, uh, like a doorbell. Okay, so I'm going to clean those up and put all of those on, and uh, then we have to put some kind of washer on the bottom. So I put those back on. Now, on the Gottlieb chime units, they have these little grommets like this that basically go inside the bar. Okay. And uh, it's just set up a little bit different. And the Bally ones are similar to the Gottlieb ones, but it's set up a little bit different on the Williams ones. The Williams ones, they had this little foam washer under here. You saw a part of it earlier. I just threw it away. Uh, and they are very similar to just a regular ring. Pinball ring. So it goes under the bar, and then the bar kind of sits on top of it. It doesn't have the grommet on the Williams ones. And then you put this on top of it. Okay. So that's just how it's... That's how Williams did it. Slightly different. So I'll clean up these bars and pop them back on there, and then we'll mess with the uh, the top pieces. There you go. You can see a little bit of the pad left, and so it's it's like it's just a foam ring that goes underneath the chime. See how it isn't inside of it? All right. You can buy all this stuff, by the way. You, uh, Marco Specialties, for instance, sells all of this stuff. So that needs to go on the bottom underneath the chimes, and its purpose is to isolate the chime from hitting this part of the metal. So like one of these rings does the same thing. All right, so with the ring on there, it suspends it so it can't hit the metal, and so there's basically rubber under it, rubber or vinyl inside of it, and then there's a, or nylon, and then there's a nylon nut on top of it. And this, the secret to it peeling and having a good sound is you don't want it to be real tight. It should be a little loose where it can move, right? That makes it ring. If it's real tight, uh, it'll still sound good, but it's real muted. It doesn't ring. So I guess you could tune it to how you like it. Um, so with those in there, now we need to put this little plate on top. All right, so this one has been damaged in a way I've seen before. If you look at the top of these little things, they are... There's a hole through there that this little shepherd's hook goes through. Here, I'll call it that. Um, this one, it's been cut. I've seen this before. Uh, people won't know how to get the thing out, so they'll cut it out. Or I assume that's what's happening. I had one where all six of them were like that. It's possible that it broke, but I don't see how. So that little piece was missing, and someone made another one which is fine, that'll work just fine. But if you cut that thing on the top, it just causes you all kinds of problems because then this comes loose and this pops loose and the whole bar is, pops off of where it's supposed to be. So uh, the way to fix it is you put this back in and then just use some pliers and crimp it so that it can't come out. So that's what we're gonna do. Because you, you can't easily repair it because it's part of the entire assembly, you know? So you'd have to replace that whole bucket there. So I put it back in and crimped it, and yeah, two more to go. They look fantastic. Oh, and sound fantastic. Okay, and so also I cleaned these up. Uh, of course, this one was working all right. This one was sticking. No more. Let's 
resetting just fine. Now it lands a little weird there, but I've, I've, I think I got it about as good as I can get it. If you'd, uh, it's touching that and that, but this one's not hooked to anything, so it doesn't really matter. And the other ones are lined up fine, but if I adjust it, it kind of overshoots some of these other ones. So I like it the way it is. It'll be okay, people. Um, so we got all of that. Everything's clean. I have touched everything in the bottom of this, including all of the the uh, the uh, the uh, Jones plugs. So, with that said, the knockers burn up. We got to figure that out. But um, we uh, we're ready to put the playfield back in and work on the bottom of the playfield a little bit. So, I have went through and replaced all of the light bulbs underneath the play field. And I cleaned all of the lenses above the light bulbs so they'll shine through and look real clean. I went through and I cleaned every one of these switches on all of these relays. Now, keep in mind, this thing is already working. Or still working, I guess we should say. I wanted to show you a couple of these relays. Some of these are just works of art. Like, look at this one. Is this the one? Yeah, this one. This one's great. <laughs> I have not been drinking. Okay, so the Z relay, look at this. The top switch is a make or break switch. So it is maked, now it is braked, but the bottom one has maked. So that goes back and forth, make or break. And then underneath it is another one. Now notice how when the big switch hits the little switch, they move a little bit. Perfectly adjusted. If you've got one that's not perfect, though, don't adjust it. If, if it's still working, just leave it alone. Because if you go through and try to adjust every one to be perfect and beautiful like these, you'll mess one of them up and then you won't be able to find the problem. Now this next one, this is a brake switch. It's normally made and it breaks whenever the relay pulls in. This next one is a make switch. It's normally broke. It makes when the relay pulls in. All right. So this one relay has all of the different types of switch. There's only three types. There's also a make make, which is where they just jam three of them together, but that don't really matter. Um, so very cool. And then you have this one, the change relay. This is what makes like whenever you have lights where a special is lit up on the left and then it alternates to the right back and forth. This is the relay that does it. That's why it's hot because if it's if it's moved where everything's to the right or whatever, it stays like that until you hit whatever makes it go back the other way. So it's been hot at some point. Actually, the whole point. Uh, but look, it's got a whole bunch of make and break ones. So it's like a whole gaggle of them. Very cool. So I just, I didn't adjust much, just a one or two blades, but everything was cool because again, the thing is still working. So uh, all of the switches are fine, cleaned all of those. All of the relays are fine, cleaned all of those. The pop bumpers look fine clean those switches, uh, replaced all the light bulbs, but we're missing one little thing here. The spinner. Should have a little metal piece that's, that goes down through the play field and is attached to this. And so as it spins, it pulls this blade up. It's all bent, but, and it makes it touch this blade. And that's what gives you the points. So that little piece I have ordered um, I ordered a bunch more light bulbs because I'm getting low. And then finally the flippers. So the flippers, they're pretty worn. If my battery doesn't die on my camera here while I show you this. Here's how you check. This fiber link here is attached to this metal plunger. Ugh, there we go with a roll pin. Now, when you pull in the flipper, that is going to move independent of the fiber link. That's that's pretty severe. So that's pretty bad wear. So that needs replaced. Now see the washer there with the little clip on it? On this side, they must have lost that. So somebody has wrapped a piece of metal around it and squeezed it like we did on the uh, chime <laughs> to crimp it in place and it worked 
The man man made it work. And then this one. If I can, it's hard to do this with one hand where you can see it. Look at that. Tons of play. The hole through this fiber link is what you would call wallowed. Uh, also known as wallard. It's very wallard out. So I've ordered that so we can rebuild those and get them nice and snappy. Um, the only other thing left to do on the bottom of the play field is to clean up this bonus unit. It's exactly the same as the steppers that we did in the bottom, or pretty much exactly the same. In theory, it works exactly the same. Um, same thing. One coil makes it go one way. One coil makes it go the other way. Only difference being it doesn't reset all the way. It just lets it step one thing, one position back. Now you notice how it was moving real slow. That's because it needs to be cleaned like the other ones. Um, but that's it for under the play field other than waiting on parts. So we need to wait on the flipper parts. We need to wait on the spinner uh, wire. And then uh, we'll do that last. And I got to throw away all the old bulbs. Okay, folks, we'll get back to the Aztec here in a second, but it's viewer mail time again. Some of you don't like the viewer mail segment, but, you know, if somebody's nice enough to send me something, the least I can do is tell them thank you, especially if they're anonymous. But my only way of thanking this person is, a not is because they didn't tell me who it was, or they kind of did. So this is our address if you want to send us something. We are not requesting you send us anything. If you are poor, please don't send us anything. And I'm dead serious about that. Uh, we come from little means ourselves. So don't do any crap like spend your last dollar sending me a, a Christmas card or something. <laughs> I don't need anything. But if you want to send me something, there's nothing wrong with that. So this is from Amazon. And it comes with a little note. If you don't know, you can go on Amazon and send people gifts. Again, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just saying some people do that. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, part of receipt, part of being generous is allowing people to give you things. You know, some of us have a problem accepting gifts. And I'm kind of like that. But, you know, you get my point. All right, so here is the note. It says, a gift for you. Please enjoy these gifts. It says, please enjoy these gifts. Look, I don't have any problem with it. I mean, if I talk with an accent like this, I can't correct people's grammar. Right? <laughs> please enjoy these gifts that were made in USA. Hell yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas and thank you for all you do. From Dr. Detroit. Dr. Detroit. Boy, I love Detroit. You know Detroit's where Motown's from. Detroit's where all, all the old car companies were, and still are, kind of, right? My favorite, you know, I'm, I've got a um, an old, uh, I've got a Donnie and I and Joey. We've got some old vehicles. Most of them are kind of beat up, but we've got some old cars. We love that crap. My dad was into it, and I have a um, I have a '69 Mustang, just a coupe. It's not anything special. But I've got a 69 Mustang, among some others. And um, uh, there is a video. It's I think it's Martha Reeves and the Vandellas, Nowhere to Run, Nowhere to Hide. And they filmed the video in Detroit at the, at the Ford factory while they were making Mustangs. And the girls are, are running around all through the, the factory while they're building the cars. They'd probably never do that today because one of them would get hit in the head with something, sue them for $10 trillion. But it's a cool video if you haven't seen it. And at the end, the cars, the Mustangs are rolling out and the girls are sitting on the boot. Boy, it must have been a heck of a time to be alive. So let's see what's in here. Uh-huh. A pair of channel lock pliers. Fantastic. I love channel lock. Like he said, or it may be a female. That may be a chick, Dr. Detroit. I don't know. Like I said, completely anonymous. Uh, but uh, these are made in the USA. Channel Lock. They, if you go on their website, they're uh, still they're proud of it. See, they're doing they're showing crap like this on their website. Some some guys and girls in the factory 
beating on things with hammers and there's fire going everywhere and they're welding and grinding and then they and they uh that's how they make these tools <laughs> We take pride in making sure the flyers we put out are to the highest standard. People that work here are tough, dependable, dedicated, very loyal. You can see it when you walk the production floor. They're all the kind of person that would roll up their sleeves and get it done. Whether we're making tools to hoof horses or we're making pliers to attach water pumps to, to engines or... So, you know, this is about the most handy tool you can have. Just a regular pair of slip link, slip joint pliers. So thank you. I will use those. You know why they sent me this, I'll bet, Dr. Detroit? Because they saw that video where Joey was using a freaking pair of Chinese ones. So I appreciate that. Now we, now he has no excuse. Okay. And then there is this. O'Keefe's Working Hands Cream. Guaranteed Relief. I got to tell you, I don't work hard enough that I know what you need this for relief from. <laughs> Over on Donnie's channel, some of the viewers are always uh, making fun of my lily white hands, they say. <sighs> Which is racist, they shouldn't say that. O'Keefe's Working Hands Hand Cream is a concentrated moisturizer that heals, relieves, and repairs extremely dry, cracked hands. When used daily, it is clinically proven to instantly boost moisture levels, create a protective level layer on the skin surface, and help prevent further moisture lo loss. Well, that's cool. Now I'm glad I've got some around. And it does say that it's made in the USA, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. We will use this at some point as soon as I do enough work to need it. Or I guess I could give it to Donnie. He does hard work all the time, every day. He was working earlier today. I went and saw him at work. I had to give him something. Um, so very cool. Thank you, Dr. Detroit. And then finally, these here. These are Flex... Uh, uh, little flex things that are really good for cleaning relays. So the contacts on EM pinball relays. These are made by Jonard Tools. Now look at the, I want to show you a little trick that they that they pull. Now I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing something out. We should start noticing this. Look at this little trick they pull. See so this is a double whammy here. Designed in the USA Made in PRC. Huh. Made in where? PRC. Never heard of that one before. <laughs> Do you see the double whammy? They're saying, well, it was designed in the USA. Yeah, it was all designed in the USA. <laughs> Everything's designed in the USA. Anyway. Uh, and then they won't put China on it. They put People's Republic of China. But I don't blame them on some of this stuff. I mean, it's a little tiny thing. They can't have somebody in the United States make that. Because, um, um, uh, uh, hmm. Well, I can't think of a reason, uh, but you know, it'll come to me later. <laughs> but this is a good example of something that you can't get these that aren't made in China, you know? So it's it's not like there's an American version and you, you can use it or you can pick the Chinese one. They don't nobody else makes these that I'm aware of. So a lot of things you have to buy in China. I buy stuff from China all the time. You have to. But I appreciate Dr. Detroit your efforts to send me uh, made in the USA stuff. All three of these will be used by me and my family to continue making uh, our uh, mediocre videos, according to some people. <laughs> So we appreciate you thinking of us, and Merry Christmas to you too. Now let's get back to the Aztec. The lights do look better, I don't know. Well, at least we fixed that little bit of it. Now this one up here says advanced bonus when lit, but that one's out. I wonder though if that's, what, if that's one of the things that that alternating relay does. Yep. All right, so there you go, folks. So uh, we're getting there. We still need to work through the back box. And of course, we need to do everything on top of the play field. So next time, we'll look at the back box, see what we can get done back there, and uh, continue on through it. we got to bring this thing back to where it's nice and reliable. I don't want to play it right now because of all the dirt and everything on it. It's going to just make it worse. We already busted the, the rubber rings last time we played it. So uh, leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We'd like to thank everybody that's bought a t-shirt. If you want one of those, email us and let us know. 
And uh, make sure to check out my brother, Donnie. My brother, Donnie, has his own channel here on YouTube. Joey and I work on arcade games, pinball machines, and jukeboxes. Like this sweet Neo Geo. And uh, my brother, Donnie, works on old buildings, old vehicles, things like that. So go check him out. I'm over there with him on his channel a lot. And if you want to support our channel in another way, uh, you can uh, use the, our Amazon link. So there's a link down below each one of our videos to Amazon. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, go through our link to go to it. That's all you got to do. You don't have to sign up or anything. And uh, it gives us a percentage for advertising that to you and getting you over to Amazon. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And we will see you on the next video. Hope you've enjoyed it. I, I forgot I was going to show you the chimes. 5,000. 100. And then 10. <laughs> Sounds great. We'll see you on the next video.